Hello. Oh. Um, last uh, video we have seen the, the primary shear forces while stirring the eccentrically loaded rotated joint. This time we'll be stirring. This time we'll be stirring. Uh, the same thing, but uh, the, as you have left on that is second row. Last class we have seen uh, the primary forces uh, that is P S one equal to P S two equal to P S three equal to P S four equal to P Y N that is P Y four. So all these are primary. primary shear forces. Now, as we have known one thing that uh, this by superimposition of forces it has been shared by all the units as P by 4. There is another thing due to shifting the superimposition because it was something like that right? Let me draw. Something like that. Right. Uh, right. Your CG is here, this here. Um, it is at the eccentricity E. Isn't it? So, as you have uh, shifted. So in this case we have seen uh, this thing mm. uh, where it has been uh, at a certain eccentricity. Okay. So due to which we have seen in this point, in this, in this point, in this point, and in this point that it is P by 4 in case of the shear, primary shear forces. Now due to the shifting. What happens is that at the CG, at the at the CG, this P, there will be a turning moment M. That will be M will be equal to P in that is a load that is a load applied and the eccentricity E. And this has to be balanced. Since uh, uh, it cannot be analytically shown how these four rivets will balance or adjust with this turning moment, there is an assumption that we make is that suppose uh, these four rivets are at a certain diagonal distance from the Uh, from the CG that is if we go by um, R1 R2 R3 and R4 at a certain distance R1 R2 R3 R4 for the four rivets okay from the CG we can write that the assumption that is actually you are making if you are generalizing suppose uh, fi is directly proportional to ri just a minute yeah. 
yes and we are back mm. suppose uh, this thing uh, this uh, fi is actually the secondary shear force which will be at a certain distance r1 for the rewave one and is at a perpendicular distance is at a perpendicular distance there from the cg so uh, if we draw a perpendicular vector for the one and then for the second f2 for that one f1 and in such manner f3 and sorry f4 okay so in this case this f1 where we are generalizing as fi is directly proportional to r i could let the, uh, the, the assumption that we are talking about next uh, if we remove the proportion to sign using proportion to constant in f we need f fi equal to k into r i isn't it uh, so if we write a uh, turning moment equation it will be f1 r1 f2 r2 f3 r3 f4 r4 plus m equal to zero since uh, it's a we have to actually we have written turning moment equation in equilibrium state a static case okay um, since all are in a clockwise direction, so uh, uh, we are we are seeing all in the same side having the same sign that is positive. So this equation uh, that is in this equation we have seen now. As you know, that Fi is equal to K into Ri, isn't it? So it means nothing but F1 equal to K into R1, comma F2 equal to K into R2, and so on. Okay, I hope uh, you're getting this point. Okay. So if we put the value of f1, f2 in this equation, so it will be something like f, sorry, it will be something like k, k, r1 square, r2 square, r3 square, R four square plus zero. From this equation, we actually therefore we can find the value of k that is n by summation of R i. We are generalizing this R one, R two, R three, R four as R i, where R i square since all are in square terms. So I equal since we have four regress, I equal to one, two, four. This is division. Okay. So I found the value of k. Now in this equation, that is f i equal to k of r i. So we can write the value of k as m by summation of r here now you can write i equal to 1 to 4 into r i that is our f i right so uh, and our m is what actually that is p into p isn't it so in here we will write minus m summation we are just 
considering summation as you know it is i1 to i4 into uh, ri means uh, we can write it as p into p from this thing into this ri so fi becomes this thing so uh, if we write the secondary shear forces as suppose as we have said F S1 okay it will be nothing but P into P into R1 by summation of uh, that is R square plus R2 square plus R2 of course, but we can remove this uh, summation uh, because we are directly using the values. So uh, this is what uh, if we can write. This is for the first relay, this equation. In this case, uh, in this way, uh, we can find out Fs1, Fs2, Fs3, and Fs4. Okay. Uh, in the next video, we will be finding out, as you have seen, uh, here is the F1, F2, F3, F4. There is this thing where our primary forces are acting. So, in the same point, there, there it is P by 4. In the same here. It is P by 4, P by 4, and P by 4. So, in every point, that is in every uh, position of the rivet, there are two forces acting on the same point. So, since two forces are acting, you can find the resultant, that is, resultant force for all the points for rivet 1, rivet 2, rivet 3 and rivet 4. In the next video we will see how to find out the resultant forces and uh, finally uh, validating our equation with uh, shear stress. That will be the last part for centrically loaded uh, riveted joints. Thank you.